Welcome to AM. My name is Richard Conway, and this is the platform for age group multi sport athletes to showcase their journeys. Welcome along to episode 44 of the Age Group Multi Sport Podcast. And we're now in February as we record this. January's gone behind us, thankfully. Uh, the nights are drawing out, it's getting lighter, and hopefully the weather will be picking up. On this episode, we welcome Irishman Stephen Moody. And Stephen has raced for Ireland. He's a former rugby player and he's done lots of marathon running. He joined a triathlon club and packed in his his proper job as a I think he was an IT consultant, but he'll he'll mention that in in the podcast. And uh, he took up coaching. He loved it that much. Um, so he's now the owner of the Smart Endurance Solutions platform, which you can find at smartendurancesolutions.com. And they offer programs and one-to-one coaching and all the usual. But Stephen's got a really interesting story, as uh, as all you guys have that have been on. Um, and I hope you enjoy that. The World Triathlon uh, Organisation have just set out uh, some new rules for the 2022 season and the uh, age group underscore news on Instagram posted a load of uh, of the the new rules that they've come out with and some of them are quite quite humorous um, so if you want to see the full thing go over to their Instagram page they're a really good page to follow if you're into age group multi-sport the first one that they've come up with is riding positions. Um, most of them are now prohibited, apart from the standard seated, um, top of the bars, on the hoods, or on the uh, the drops. Um, and I put a post up myself actually about uh, the banning puppy paws, and I got quite a few messages back asking what on earth is puppy paws. And uh, the easiest way to explain it is where you put your forearms over the top of your bars and you're not holding on with anything. Um, it can be quite dangerous if you go over a bump, so I can see why they've done it. Um, so, But yeah, puppy paws, that's banned. Um, for the 60 pluses, wetsuits um, can be used in higher temperatures than normal. Sleeve tri suits are now going to be allowed, and they've even made where we should put our body markings clearer. Um, so, for example, on the arm, it's as close to the shoulder as possible. Uh, in draft uh, racing, men and women can now draft each other, which is a bonus, because you know, as we all know, there's some really fast ladies out there, and it's good to jump on even if it is only for a short time uh, when we're drafting. So that's good. Um, the other one is uh, for longer distance and non-drafting. Uh, the drafting zones, they're going to penalise anybody who keeps going in and out of those drafting zones without actually overtaking um, and getting an advantage. So be careful of that one if you're doing the longer distance. Um Races can now be cancelled if there are strong currents in open water or um, the whole the whole thing can be closed down if there are lightning strikes. So You're not allowed to wear sleeveless wetsuits when wetsuits are mandatory and you're not allowed to have a water bottle on the back of your saddle if you're in a draft legal race. Um, on the final one, which I thought was quite hilarious... Um, no competing with the assistance of a walking stick. So there you go. So those are the new rules. So a couple of podcasts that I've found um, interesting this month um, was another one around running shoes. And it was on that triathlon show where the guest, Professor Dustin Joubert, discussed his study comparing carbon-plated running shoes. And it was um, really good to find out that I haven't wasted my money on these so-called super shoes uh, and they actually do give you a benefit if you want to hear more about his findings head over to that triathlon show and give that a listen and the second podcast is by uh, former guest 
Paul Larson, who was on the podcast, um, and he was discussing the Athletica AI training uh, platform. Um, but he's just started a podcast called the Training Science Podcast, together with his uh, good friend Martin Boucher. Um, and they've done four episodes so far. And the last one they've done, and it had Alistair Brownlee on there. And Alistair was talking um, about his early days, about his training, and what he thought of polarised training and hit training. And um, also, he was talking about the sub-7 and the sub-8 that uh, he's involved in and how it all came about. So a really, really interesting podcast. And what I didn't realise was that... Um, a hot announcement that uh, was part of the show was that Alistair's going to work more closely with uh, Athletica AI in the future. So watch this space. Um, I can only state from my own experience that uh, it's a really good platform, really simple to use, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what um, Alistair Brownlee brings to that platform. Been watching the World Cyclocross last weekend and... GB had some great performances throughout all the uh, age groups and starting off in the junior ladies um, where Zoe Backstead won the whole thing. She won the race by a country mile to be honest and um, yeah it was really good to see. And then in the um, junior men's Nathan Smith came third and uh, he got a bronze medal podium place. Ten his tenacity of sticking with the top the top two guys the broke away in a three and um, yeah he came in third so well done Nathan we got fifth place with Cameron Mason in the men's under 23s race and then finally in the men's elite we got a world champion out of that and it was Tom Pidcock having watched Tom the weekend before and he was a bit off it having come back from a training camp with the uh, Ineos Grenadiers. Um, after he was interviewed off that race, he said, yep, yeah, I'll be ready, with a wry smile, knowing exactly that he was going to peak at the right time, and sure enough, he just bossed it. Um, he took his took his moment to go, and nobody could keep up with him. And um, great celebration at the end as well, doing his Superman celebration. I can't see him uh, being able to do that anymore because he'll probably get banned, although it is cycling, so they might they might allow it, the celebration. Uh, but no, if you haven't seen the highlights of that, have a, head over to YouTube and, um, and, and watch how much he just dominated the field. So well done to uh, Tom and all the other guys. It was really good to watch, so I really enjoyed it. So it's time to bring you a new feature. Um, on the last episode, I'd mentioned that we were looking to find a couple of uh, multi-sport athletes that were trying to qualify for age group and we would like them to come on the show on a fortnightly basis and on each episode just share with us their progression into how the training's going um, right up until their qualifying race and potentially beyond if they're uh, racing for GB. So... First person to reach out um, who's looking to become uh, the next gen age group um, is Rosalind Davis Jones. And um, we have a brief uh, chat with Rosalind coming up. Uh, it'll just give you an indication of her background and um, what she's aiming for. And she's very kindly uh, agreed to let us follow her progress. And she's quite open and honest about not sure whether she'd be able to actually qualify or not. Uh, but even so, it's going to be fascinating for us as listeners and um, to see whether she can or she can't. And um, yeah, um, looking forward to it. And if we can give her any help along the way, um, we will do. Um, so I hope you enjoy this new feature. And thank you once again for Rosalind and the other guys that have been in touch who want to um, take part in it. So we'll see you on the other side. Well, thanks you. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for um, agreeing to do this. Well, thanks for having me. Whereabouts are you in the world? Uh, I'm uh, in Leicestershire, just outside Loughborough in a little village. Right. 
called Barrow upon Saw. Right. Some some big big triathlete names in this village. I've uh, yeah. seen Tim Don about and um, right. got quite excited. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you want to just tell us a little bit about your background, I got your email, so I've got some idea. But um, we can put this in the podcast so the listeners can can hear what you're all about, really. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm 25, and I did my first triathlon when I was 15. Um, so. I guess that makes me a triathlete for 10 years, which sounds a little bit crazy because I don't feel like I've done that many triathlons, <laughs> really. Um, and I, I joined a swimming club when I was, uh, I think it was about eight or nine, uh, Retford Swimming Club, and, and absolutely loved it. Um, trained at county level. Um, I was in the county squad when Rebecca Adlington was kind of in her prime, which was amazing because she was part of Nova as well. Um, and then it did the, the training volume really got, too much when I was about 13 I was I was training eight times a week um and then I was asked to step up to 10 times a week yeah. and I just decided that it would be it was just too much I wanted to carry on with running with youth group with music with all sorts of other then and then when I was 15 my, my grandpa saw a local triathlon sprint triathlon um advertised in in his local gym it was a pool swim um and said why don't you give it a go so I thought yeah why not and uh and I was as the novice of all novices. <laughs> and then uh, when I was 19, I went to uni and joined the tri club there. So that's kind of when I started training kind of properly per se in all three disciplines. It was brilliant. I loved it. Um, I mean, there were there's some great, it was at Durham University and there's some fantastic right. athletes there who in the year, a couple of years above me were age groupers. Mm. Um, Is that how and, you found out about age group then? Yeah, that's the first time that I'd really kind of considered it. Um, not not considered it for me at that point. I definitely wasn't good enough. Um, but I remember one of, one of my friends saying, oh, it's not that hard to get into age group. And I was like, that's all right for you to say. <laughs> um, I was like, very much is. It feels like a huge challenge. And it still does. Um, but yeah, it was just, I learned so much about training, about nutrition, about kind of how to manage everything about recovery and and all sorts of different things that um I think particularly like managing training load swimming was so much about volume and you kind of could do a lot of volume mm. um whereas you know something like running you can't you can't train to the same extent you know hours and hours and hours and hours each week um without kind of coming across injury which I did I got injured for the first time <laughs> for several several times um, but yeah, and, and just kind of developed, progressed over uni. Um, and then in, in final year, I was captain of the performance squad, which was great fun. And uh, I, my final year was uh, start the, the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. So it was kind of half a year, really, because obviously yeah. COVID, <laughs> COVID cut yeah, it yeah. short. Yeah. Um, but those six months were awesome. And, and training kind of just absorbed everything, you know, I, I, I would structure my day around training rather than my degree but I just loved it got such a great group of friends that obviously we're spending so much time together so yeah absolutely loved it and then uh, and then lockdown hit and all that stopped um and and I haven't really started back training back in the pool properly I've only kind of the last few weeks got back in the pool and done a bit by myself but um I guess I kind of lost that motivation after kind of training so intensely, so hard. I was, I was in, I was in really good shape considering in yeah. my swimming and my running particularly, I was really pleased with where I was. And then uh, to kind of, it, it stopped, pools were closed and then I got injured from running. So um, I effectively became a cyclist over lockdown. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and my husband's a keen cyclist. So he's, um, he's been dragging me out, out on the bikes for the last couple of years and riding with someone faster again I've improved so much just just from that so um I guess yeah kind of thanks to lockdown I I never considered myself even kind of capable of going for age group or anything like that because my cycling was almost always my weakest Mm. um and then it's only kind of due to lockdown and due to to doing a lot more cycling kind of by default that my cycling is now in a a strong enough position that actually I'm considering (laughs) age group yeah. level so how do you how do you see this progressing then and what's the what's the aim what's the goal what you're trying to qualify for well the event I've entered um there wasn't the option actually when I entered to click 
you know, with intent to qualify for right. age group or whatever. So I, I still need to inquire about that. It's the uh, it's the aqua bike that I've yeah. entered um, yeah. mainly because um, of just being unsure of you know plantar fasciitis with my running is it's a, a tricky injury so I yes. thought well I'll, I'll do something I, I'd never heard of an aqua bike before actually until I went on the website and then got really yeah, excited yeah. I was like great that's you know that's something yeah. that I could I could aim for um that kind of takes out that worry of, of uh, a running injury so yeah swim bike obviously I've never done one before um mm-hmm. but in my mind it's just a triathlon <laughs> with the run chopped off but uh yeah it'd be good to just just do some races kind of beforehand so I feel um a bit like a, <laughs> I'm, I'm swimming in the deep end not really knowing what I'm you know it's like just the idea of, of voicing the fact that I'm yeah. I would like to qualify yeah. is quite scary so I, genu- I genuinely don't know whether it's going to be possible I don't genuinely don't know whether I'm going to be able to do it but I like the idea of the challenge it, at the moment really it's something to aim for it's a goal it's a focus about that but at the moment I'm, I'm basically kind of just doing it myself haven't got a coach or anything like that so um we'll see it might be possible it might not be possible but so have you got a, have you got a plan in mind are you following a plan at the moment um no <laughs> yeah I mean I, I know I, I need to kind of put a structured structured plan together I've got some um some long distance cycles with with some friends um 100 200 milers and, and a coast to coast kind of um set for the next few months as well so I'm definitely going to be needing to spend a lot of time on the bike and then within mm-hmm. that um you know doing some efforts doing some the, the group of guys that I ride with were all you know they're, yeah. they're faster than me they're stronger than me so they just kind of pull me around and encourage me to really try hard so I am still improving with my bike from that um yeah. and then uh, I'm hoping that when I kind of get a little bit more comfortable in the water I can use some of my old training sessions um if I don't join a club and and uh, do a coach session but yeah, as I said, like I only, I literally only entered the the race a week or two ago, so it's um, it's very new, and I haven't kind of got my head around everything and, and kind of. Well, that's good. It's nice, nice for this because it's fresh, um, and it's yeah. in May. <laughs> it's in May, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's coming up. Yeah, coming yeah. End of twenty second of May. Twenty second of May, yeah. So we've got, I've got a few, a few months. Yeah. To get sorted. Pro- the the thing that I'm probably most nervous about is is just trying to trying to fit it in with with life with working it's so i think that's that's a great a great start <laughs> that sounds great i am i'm genuinely entering this as a it's it would be really great to qualify i genuinely yeah. have no idea whether i'm actually going to be able to qualify i don't know kind of i haven't even looked at the standard or whatever i know obviously aqua bike is a, a very recent introduction yeah. so you know i don't know what what times i need to be at from a bike or a swim point of view so um I just want to enjoy it. I, I like doing things that are a little bit different, something new and uh, and challenges just for the sake of it. So, yeah, <laughs> I kind of, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to to qualify, well, but I'm happy to give it a go. Yeah, well, it'll be what it'll be and I'm yeah. sure you'll do your best and you'll, like you say, just have fun, have fun with the training and, and have fun doing it. So, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Everything yeah. else is a bonus, isn't it? So, it is. lovely to meet you. And, um, I look forward to the next instalment. Really? So that's just a little bit of an insight into Rosalind Davies Jones and her attempts to get an age group qualification into the aqua bike um, this year. And we'll be following Rosalind, as I said earlier, um, up until she races in May up in uh, Northumbria. And uh, so good luck to Roz and really looking forward to working with her and following a story and a journey. And if there's any help we can offer along the way, we're really uh, pleased to do so. Uh, we're looking to put the extended version of this into a podcast on its own with the other guys that have uh, agreed to come on and do it as well. So, uh, yeah, look out for that one. And that's about it. So we'll uh, head over to our main event and um, we'll see you on the other side. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Richard. How are we? Not so bad. How are you? Not so bad. Yeah, so thank you ever so much for agreeing to come on and taking your time out of your day. Um, Much appreciated for reaching out. Um, And if you want to just tell us a little bit about your background, I believe you're in Dublin. Is that right? 
Yeah, so Stephen Moody, based in Dublin, Ireland, although I've spent a fair bit of time traveling around the world with work, etc. Um, so I don't really have a classic, classic Irish accent. Um, been into triathlon now for 20 plus years, um, a varying degrees of success and um, immersion, shall we say, but it's, I've got a lot more immersion now because I actually, now it's my full-time job. Right. So what is it that you actually do? Yep, I am now, I'm a, a triathlon coach and okay. I run a small business called smartendurancesolutions.com. Got into sport, loved the sport, learned up about sport, <laughs> wanted to figure out how to get faster, so I'd looking at the science. Um, some people wanted to get coached, so I took that on board, and then it snowballed. And then I realized I was probably a much better coach than I was a very poor IT consultant. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So how long have you been doing this then, now? Um, I've been coaching on and off for around... 15 years really right. small scale at start I was helping out my two mates um, and then just in the last uh, that, but I kept on growing people get results people sort of go who's coaching it Stephen la 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 that grew to the point where I had to make a, uh, a come to Jesus moment as with my girlfriend said look I'm really enjoying the coaching <laughs> what do we do and as she said look enjoy the coaching let's try it out full time and what's the worst that can happen now, when we're doing our scenario planning again, we probably should suggest a global pandemic and see how that, <laughs> that works out. But we actually, in fairness, so I've been in it full time now for three years and we have survived the pandemic, which is great. If essentially you're selling a, a luxury good, which coaching is mm -hmm. during a time when people's races are being cancelled, etc. And you're surviving, you must be doing something right. So not regretting it um, still enjoy the, the fact that I'm my own boss. Mm. Um, and that kind of helped a lot of people. And it's been cool when we got back to racing and stuff like that. Like you've seen people's results and people who have spent a lot of time in pain caves on Zwift and all the rest and on turbos, like they're starting to get rewards. So yeah. fingers crossed for better times ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a really brave move of you to like just actually stopping, stopping a job. And then I guess it's just following the passion that you love. And then it doesn't, then it doesn't seem like work, doesn't it? When you're doing it. Well, no, absolutely. As you do, when you're getting up in the morning, you're dreading logging on and what email is going to be there and like what meetings you're going to have to have and you find yourself drifting off. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to you get excited when someone comes back with some feedback on training peaks and they sort of go, look, you know what? We're all going to be, we're all going to be working or, uh, for a certain amount of time. Like, you might as well make it as enjoyable as possible. Um, and as you said, I've, I've been passionate about it. Triathlon's been amazing for me in terms of the people I've met, the things I've done, the places I've seen, the races I've done, and going on, oh, and it's such a wonderful community. As in, like all the people I know in triathlon, they're all can do, they're positive. Whereas in the corporate world, you get people who are kind of negative and uh, unhappy. Typically, most triathletes you meet and runners, etc., they're happy individuals. They want to go do something. They want to challenge themselves. Again, surround the, surround yourself with the people you want to become. So perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, it sounds, sounds really good. And like I say, very, very brave, but uh, it seems to be paying off here. So how's, um, how's lockdown affected your, the way you're training and the way you're coaching people? Obviously, we're out of it now, maybe going back into it, but how did it affect you when it first kicked in? Yeah, no, well, I suppose everyone was a little bit nervous at the start. Um, with the, the main impact was swim, swimming, obviously, because most people, again, being in Ireland and most people I coach one to one, um, we're well used to crap weather. For so a lot of people have kind of a good indoor setups with turbos and swifts, and um, and treadmills or the routes. So again, you just go revert back to that. We did some more meetups with the squad. We had um, more sort of running challenges, etc., and all the rest. The swimming was the big concern for everyone again because you. You can't really uh, get that. It's a lot of age group is a very weak swimmers anyhow. So we had to, for myself personally, we had to uh, invent an actual specific kind of swim strength and conditioning set. I enforced a lot more yoga into the plans. I um, we when the weather got a bit better, and then um, and people who had access to kind of lakes, rivers, and sea. We'll be in Ireland, most of them never too far away from sea, and. Um, 
we started getting into the into the open water a lot earlier than we would have because the, the gyms were locked down. And again, within protocols, we all we created our own little bubbles, et cetera, and said, look, you can train with that guy, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, that was the main thing. And uh, it, it forced me a lot to live by the technology more, to be honest, in my own training. I know how Swift setups, meetups, et cetera, and all the rest. But I suddenly I had to, I like because I'm a coach, I've got lots of freedom in my day. So I can go for an outdoor spin like for two hours on a Tuesday rather than have to do a Zwift session where most of my guys, if they're coming back, it's late. So I had to suddenly sort of live more in my own sessions, which I kind of understand why some of my people uh, give out to me. But we all get results. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. No, that's, uh, yeah, it's nice to hear that you hear so many stories over the last couple of years and how things have changed and people have adapted and technology has become more important. Um, for example, Zoom that we're chatting over, you know, it's been inv invaluable, I think. So, yeah, it's uh, really cool. So and have, you, have you handled your, your indoor training, your, your training during lockdown? How did you get on, Richard, in terms of what yes, your main kind of impact? Pretty, pretty similar, you know, I mean, swimming was a no-no. Um, Zwift, I mean, I've been on Zwift for a number of years anyway, and it's, I think it's my favourite, favourite tool. Uh, and at the time we were, we've, we were living in the countryside, we've since moved into town, but at the time we were living in the countryside, so we're literally out the back door and we were over fields onto the coast, you know, so it wasn't a problem. Um, I think if we go back in this time, it'll be a bit more of an issue, um, but hopefully it won't come to that. So yeah, like most people, you just, you know, you, you coped and um, got myself some swimming bands and try to try to incorporate that. Um, so you just you just adapt, don't you? And that's that's exactly what I did. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think also a lot of people were worried about, um, you know, go turn up our races and just getting kind of left behind in the swim. But yeah. I think with a global pandemic, everyone was starting. And I think what people had managed to do, they managed to ramp up looking at swim split times in terms of the races that were competed. Not a huge, I'm not seeing a massive kind of um, degrading of actual swim quality. Mm. I think people just managed to cram, keep their fitness up, their strength and fitness, and kind of um, on, the, as you said, bands, got a gym work and all the rest. And then when we got the windows for getting the pool, we, we kind of loaded up. And then, as I said, a lot of people got forced themselves into a bit more open water swims than they would have before, which actually I think helped negate any loss of technique fear. So we know, like I know personally, I, I tend to avoid the, the ocean until it's um, June and all that. I was <laughs> yeah, in same. May. Yeah, I can't, I can't bear the cold either, so I'm with you on that one, uh, even with a wetsuit on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, I, I found actually the last, I don't know, I had a, a few races where I didn't even bother going to over the last three months. Um, I was supposed to be at Aveals, um, and I didn't even, didn't even attempt to go. Uh, due to the uncertainty and ability to get back and all that. And, you know, a lot of people went and raced and had a really good time. Um, but I think it's choices, isn't it, at the end of the day? So I Agreed. And I think also what it's another thing that I've seen that it's kind of forced a lot of um, Irish athletes to do anyhow and other kind of people I coach globally, it's forced them to look more at the their local domestic calendar. Mm -hmm. Like I know there's a big allure to kind of the big 70.3 and the Ironman events, et cetera. But like when you're sort of going, look, I don't don't want to book in kind of holiday, sorry, flight uncertainty, hotel uncertainty. You look at the domestic calendar and there's, there's some great races there run by clubs that, that, that don't have to be M-Drod or branded, but they're run by clubs. They can be smaller, they can more con confined, they can adhere to the protocols in a lot better way. And then mm. people are going, why have I suddenly traveled like flown three hours to go to Lanzarote to do this race, whereas there's a really cool 70.3, only an hour drive away, had a great time. It was, it was run, the money's going into a club rather than a big corporate, and that's helping the community. So I think, yeah. again, that's also one of the positives that's come out of the pandemic. People are kind of, they're not being chasing the shiny M dot all the time, which isn't the, isn't the be all and end all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's certainly made people more aware of what's around them. Um, and not not being able to or not wanting to 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 go to the ones abroad, um, but you know I missed I missed it at the same time as as not being not wanting to go. But there it is, it's choices like I said earlier. So anyway, let's okay. get into the nitty gritty. Your okay. background growing up, 
sporting wise what did you uh what did you get into what were you up to uh typical irish kid i was given opportunities to try everything from ga to rugby to cricket uh to cross country etc i was found i was pretty uncoordinated at everything but the one thing that i was quite good at because I was brave enough to stick my head where I shouldn't have been as rugby. So my background was uh, rugby. I was a very vocal yet small scrum half that used to get myself and my team into trouble with my big mouth. Um, <laughs> love the love the team sport. Love the you know the you know putting yourself on your body on the line for yourself and your teammates. Um, and then, but as I got older, uh, and again, kids have road, road spurts. They Suddenly, you're you might have been five foot seven. I was except because every the highest other person was like you know six foot. But suddenly you're up against grown men and all the rest, and you're getting absolutely smashed left, right, and center. Um, so that's when we started. And then I also found again the classic Irish distraction of went to college, drink, girls, etc. The only reason why I didn't turn professional sportsman, I'd like to point out. Um, <laughs> Nothing, nothing to do with my lack of talent, and uh, but again, so I, I fell out of it. So I took a period of time where I just didn't do any sports. Got back into rugby a bit, and again, it was even it was even worse then because I was out of shape. Whereas beforehand, mm. I used to be quite fit and fast. Yeah. Now I was not so fast, a little bit more portly, and easier to catch, but easier to squash. So <laughs> I, I had to give up the rugby because it actually injured my back. Um, right. Um, so that's that's the background and um, yeah. it did kind of give me and I went to the doctor and all the rest and he said look what are you going to do I said well I don't I think you have to kind of give up the back's pretty bad and I said you can't really run so I took that as a decision that I should actually run a marathon I was going oh, I don't I don't like being told what I can't do so that's why I kind of <laughs> one of my, one of my strengths is my stubbornness <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's a that's a great strength to have isn't it so yeah, I got into running, um, so doing marathons, um, and uh, the uh, so I, I hadn't even thought of triathlon at that stage. Just so now, this would have been, as I said, kind of nineteen, uh, twenty years ago. But and the, the triathlon scene wasn't big in Ireland at that point. Um, mm. My friends kind of then found, you know, hey, let's try this out. Let's do it was a try a try, and I went, okay, hang on, what, what's it? What's it? Lots of questions. What's a triathlon? What's a try or try? What you mean? We we have to swim. Uh, what's okay? The bike. What do we use? Uh, Etc. So did that, and my friend beat me very convincingly, which just made me really annoyed. And then I really got into triathlon to get much better and beat him. Yeah. So was a so when you found out about obviously I agree I don't think there was there was tw- twenty years ago it really unless you knew it's one of those if you know you know. It never really entered the radar. Um, so once you'd found out about triathlon, did you then, and you wanted to beat your friend, did you then join a club or did you get coached or what? Were you just self, you just went and got better yourself? Um, no, I very much, well, I actually tried to train myself. So I went to the local pool and there was one of the, I was swimming at the same time, a, a local pr- a club called pr- a Prana Triathlon Club were swimming. And one of the swim coaches saw me, knew I was all out I had no idea what I was doing and said look join <laughs> it, was, it was either that or throw in one of those uh, uh, rubber rubber dings to save me so I said come in here here's the beginner lane and that's what my introduction was I, I hadn't looked for a club but a club found me right. um, and it was that was that was a game changer as in and I, if anyone wants and they're starting a triathlon and wants a bit of advice join a club um, don't you don't need to go uh, start small find a local club you get it's a cool community people were there i could ask them all sorts of questions um about all technique like suddenly a, a cycle, cycling for 40 50k on a sunday is no daunting when you're out with these new guys and you're chatting and suddenly you look down you're watching an hour is gone and it's, mm. so yeah tra- uh, join piranha triathlon club i've been with them now all my triathlon career but they were um superb and they're really they take young uh, newbies under their wing and say so, look everyone's welcome like but uh yeah so that's the only reason i think i really grew into the sport um mm-hmm. due to a sense of community 
the kind of cool people are there. The fact they made training fun. There's a little bit of competition with some people in the club. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where it went from. Yeah. So what age were you when you, you first did your, your triathlon you first joined the club? Yeah, I was 27, actually. Right, 27. And again, that's just, that's after a background of kind of playing rugby. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah, so you actually... Did a bit of running. I had done marathons before, before I met the club. Yeah, so you come into it quite young, actually, compared to a lot of people. Yeah, but I, again, the kind of force of necessity, because I, um, as I said, with the back injury, I was told I couldn't yes. do it much. And what I found, actually, the swimming and the cycling really helped the back. So it was mm -hmm. coming together of a lot of different factors, which just was brilliant for me. Yeah. So from from um, like joining the first club, and obviously you did quite a few events, how did you find out about um, age group? And and can you just tell me a little bit about age group in Ireland and how it all pans out? Yep. Um, so the age group in Ireland is... An, to qualify, you have to the, typically back when I was doing it, there was a national championship race, and you have to yeah. um, finish in whatever say the top ten in your age group, um, and then you you can apply to get selected and represent Ireland um, in whatever the Europeans or the worlds. And mm. um, I found out of that, that about it by accident. Well, not really accident. You're kind of sitting around or you're talking to again people in the club. Yeah. What's your plans for next year? Well, I want to qualify for the Worlds. And um, and then we're, got, we're going off to Spain and uh, to Europeans. And I went, wow, sounds amazing. So that's how I became aware of it. And then you had mm -hmm. to figure out which the national championship race was. You had to target that race and you had to do well. Um, and as I said, it's typically, it's either finishing in a certain position in your age group or with, if some of the races are further afield, there's more of a roll down. Um, like for example, when it was, it was in Vancouver and when I went, there was a bit more of a generous roll down because it's a bit more expensive to get from Ireland to Canada, et cetera. And um, mm. so that's how I managed to qualify so early in my career, even though I was still learning my trade. Yeah. And what distance was that at, Stephen? That was at Olympic distance. Olympic. Yeah. Yeah. So has the, has the qualification procedure changed then since the early days? I th I think it's a bit more um it's yes it has but they've moved away from having it all in one race and um, because that race may not suit people in terms of if you think about it there's the four provinces of Ireland and it, you might need to if the, and they can only really award the national championship race to one area and they tend to rotate it but it's going to be hard if you're aiming to qu qualify for the world so um that you have to go all the way from from Belfast to Limerick which is a kind of like a five hour drive mm. so now they do it more based on uh, um, on your position in the national series whereas there's a whole series of races in Ireland which track on Ireland add up all the points and you get points where you finish in a position and then you're ranked against the against your other members of your age group community and then I think if, if you're in a certain amount you can again write in and say listen I'd like to represent Ireland in the sprint version of the, the Europeans of the world, and then you get advised whether or not you've been selected. Right. So basically you've got, you're looking at their time and if you've competed and you've, you're there or that thereabouts within a, a percentage of their time, then you can, is that what you're saying? Then you can, um, ask well, it's more be... of a league, more of a league system, as I said, like, right. so you might have like your, your, your points are awarded to you on, um, your best three races as well of um, how many you do so okay. and then so at the end like you end up a league table so you will be whatever like sixth in your age group at, um, in, in like the national series yeah. and then that's how they work it right and they do the same for a duathlon series and the yeah. same for like the, the triathlon is for both sprint and Olympic how does it work yeah. in the UK mate? Right. Um, Basically, we have a set of races that uh, British Triathlon um, put out. So, for example, um, Sprint Triathlon will have three qualifying races. And for each race, you get first and second or automatic qualif qualifiers. And then, um, so that's, that's six places gone. And then there's another, what do we say? I think there's 20 spots altogether. So the rest, the rest worked out on a roll down basis of the time 
um, of your race, if that makes sense. Um, but you've yeah, got yeah. to you've got to put your ten pound in before you you qualify or you ask, try and qualify at that particular race to say you 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 intend to try and get oh, in. Oh, you have to pre-nominate yourself. I'm actually doing this race, and I want if I um, I want to be considered for qualification. You can't do exactly. it. Exactly. Actually, had a really good race, and I came third. I, I'd like yeah. to be considered. Yeah, because a lot of people rock up to a race, qualifying race, don't realise, smash it, um, and because they haven't got the tenor in, they didn't know anything about it, and they haven't qualified, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but that's just the, the system. Well, again, it's also it is if, if it's one of your goals, you got to figure out what the systems are, what the yeah. checklist to do beforehand. And again, that's what I had to do when I qualified for yeah. Vancouver, and. Um, I knew which race I had to do. I knew when I had to peak. I knew kind of broadly around what time I had to get and who I had to beat. So I think it's also that element of setting yeah. yourself up for success by knowing what's involved. Yeah, I think it's quite strategic, isn't it, sometimes? I know uh, if, you, if you've done your homework, like you've just said, then you've got a better chance of choosing which race you, you're going to enter and looking about who's in there and who you're racing against. And So, yeah, it's quite tactical, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you're kind of half open and you're watching on Strava to see, see what you're doing now. It's like, oh. And like when someone posts up all oh, my hamstrings at me, you go like, oh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess with your knowledge now, the, the guys that you coach who want to get into um, to age group, they've got a, a wealth a wealth of knowledge in your background, being able to, to get them where they want to be as well. Not only just from a coaching point of view, but from a tactical point of view as well. No, absolutely. And as I said, like some guys will come to me with specific kind of age group goals in terms of like winning their their their, their age group or qualifying for the, the worlds and the rest. And it is a case of working out which races are best for them yeah. and kind of also and also keeping an eye on the competition about the with the points as well. If like, for example, we went into last year sorry two years ago we we're going in one of my guys was second the other guy was first and we we worked out because i actually understand the point system now i said you need to beat him by roughly three positions as i said because the, the points are worked out as in where you are relative to the first person that crosses right. the line okay. so i said if you beat him by three clear positions so it's not only getting past him it's also passing the other three guys in front of him you get enough points and you will take first place so yeah. it's and again it is coming in being very clear on what you need to do rather than i'm just going to race really hard yeah. and it might be a case of like the in the end of the guy at the end of the day the guy caught up with him on the run and you with 5k to go and he was feeling a bit in the legs and he but he also knew i just need to get another three now he got four in the bag and he went i can i can defend this rather than there's always the risk that you go too hard and you, and, like, and you blow up and then you, you, you lose two more positions and you lose the goal. But he was that aware, it was drafted, drilled into him, got ahead, defended, won the, and won his age group. Yeah. Hooray for me and my athlete. <laughs> yeah, another feather in the cap. Fabulous. Absolutely. So you, you, what was your first age group um, race then that you, you did, you mentioned, was it Vancouver? Yes, Vancouver. Um, so I went over, and it was a great city. We raced in Stanley Park. Was it? Is it? Yeah, Stanley Park, the big kind of um, local park they have there. Now, annoyingly enough, it was uh, the swim got cancelled. Um, right. And okay. it got turned into a duathlon. Ah. Which, in one way, now I'm swimming is my weakest discipline. So I thought, great, fantastic. And again, oh, you're, suddenly your your goals completely change. But being my first age group uh, race, and I, I had no idea the standard. So I thought, look, yeah. I'm a much stronger runner. I've got a chance here. I have never been so blown away. <laughs> uh, like, even, like, I, I went hard. But again, like, I was mid-pack best at the, at the when coming into T, um, T1. Got out in the bike, and my bike wasn't as strong as it was now. But again, I just got, I couldn't get over, A, the, the type of bikes they were there. Now, again, remember, this is me. I was only in the sport like two, three years. Yeah. And uh, the speed of the guys. And then, like, I came <laughs> in my age group at the time, there was 100 people. And um, I came overall, I think, nine, uh, eighth year. Uh, but I do have my one, my one, like, you know, you're looking down just to see where you are relative. And I went, oh, cool. 
I managed to beat Elvis. There was a Canadian guy who I beat in sprint <laughs> finish. And his name was Elvis, and I went, oh, uh, I don't care what to say, but that's that's just worth it, man. That's it. Job done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I think for me, I always I always like to think that um, the hardest thing is qualifying, and the best thing is just going over there and and enjoying the whole experience. That's what I love about it. And yeah, you want to do as 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 well as you can. Um, but I don't really my job's done when I've qualified. That's the that's the I find the hardest bit. Once I've qualified, you know, everything else is a bonus. And we use it as me and my wife use them as a holiday as well. So, you know, um, so there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. So so going from from 80th to Vancouver, what's what's been your um sort of like your journey from there then? I, I, yeah, I, I must admit, I kind of got a distracted by the whole M dot at that stage now, which I'm a little bit more. So I didn't, I haven't actually gone back and done any other age groups yet. Yeah. Um, it is back in my, on my radar. I want to go back and start do some of the duathlon stuff. And again, um, triathlon Ireland have been very good about uh, highlighting the long, long course and the duathlons mm. in terms of was the age group qualification. Um, so. And I 100% agree with you. The actual experience of going over, like, you know, as I said, I never really was going to be like a, a rugby player for Ireland. But the fact that you're wandering around and you're you're doing the parade of nations with the flags and you're kind of you're there in your Irish team kit and you're there with the team manager, it it's as close as a rock star status I'm going to get. So, yes. and again, also seeing some of the guys I've coached go back into it um, and like the, the experiences they have and even... Even some of the venues have got a bit sexier. Like they like they like the so the, the the Spanish courses that have been put on are been fantastic. Like and the the French and all the rest. Like so, I need to get back into it, and that's one of my post COVID goals. Um, but I did my what happened afterwards. I kind of got got distracted by everyone's going like, "Have you done an Ironman?" And yeah, I found the Ironman route and la la la, and it kind of focused on that. But also realized that there's a lot more fun to be had at the shorter stuff than mm. having to go out and be doing five, six hour bikes. Whereas if you're really, like, if you're training for say, for example, the sprint championships, like you, you're, you have a much shorter uh, training volume and um, intent, well, the intensity is a bit higher, but it's quite appealing now to being cooped up for so long that, you know, you can go out, smash out a, a, a two hour bike and that's your, your training done for the Saturday and you can do other stuff yeah. around it. Yeah. So, what is your preference then? Is it is it having done everything? What the longer distance or the shorter distance, or do you just like them all? I, I am, I'm strongest at the longer distance, yeah. which is dreadful because I much prefer getting it all done. Um, <laughs> but I feel I like yeah. This I, I really enjoy the Olympic distance, but I just don't have that um, explosive engine for the the bike to be really competitive. Mm. Um, like the run's good, the the swim's good at this stage, but it, it sort of go like, but unfortunately my my ability um, as well in, in the line with, with my stubbornness and my ability not to be very competitive, I can go at a very solid, steady speed for, in a straight line for a long, long time. So that suits for Ironman distance, but it's it's not sexy, and I want I want a bit more fun. So yeah. I'm gonna throw the dice at the the Olympic distance um, the next couple of years and see how I go. So, yeah, that uh, I've been doing yeah. long distance for the last probably 10 years. Right. And I'm just I'm just looking at the benefits of, you know, yeah. maybe it's time to go back to become a, a little bit shorter and faster. Well, yeah. I'm shorter anyhow. But I think that's a good thing about the sport, isn't it? I mean, you, you can play to your strengths, but you can also, there's that that much variation and option out there. You know, you've got aqua bike, you've got... Um, aquathons you've got duathlons you've got the triathlons you know it's there's just so much to go for so it's, it's just about enjoying it the first and foremost and then trying to pick something that um you both enjoy and and are good at really i guess is the yeah is the key, isn't it i want yeah. to yeah. the the advent of aqua bike and aquathons and a it's fantastic because I've you see a lot of um, athletes who have got come back from one reason or another have some sort of injuries that yeah. they can't do the full triathlon. 
So I've got a lot of guys who had problems with their knees, but now they're coming in and they're, they're targeting the aqua bike and the age yeah. group level and they're doing really well and they're loving yeah. it. And they yeah. go like, this is fantastic. What a, what a great community. What a great sport that we can adapt no matter what your, what sort of injury challenges or sort of uh, long-term restrictions that we can work around it. Like it's what a, as you said, fantastic. Yeah. And some people just do not like running just like some people yeah. don't like swimming and some people yeah. have never biked. So, you know, but they can swim and run. So it, it just, just fits everybody. Doesn't it really? I'll just, it's cool. Yeah. And again, that's something that we, as a club as well, on Prana, we are very keen on uh, like, um, everyone gets gets the same attention as i said even if you are like just targeting aquathons or you're targeting aqua bike yeah. or you're targeting duathlons i mean we've got a range of sessions you can jump in and all the rest and you just go look if you as i said if you're doing duathlons you don't need to do any of the swim sessions you know you you've we've got really good track sessions we've got really good run sessions bike sets indoor bike sets you said just it's almost like a nice buffet of healthiness it and is. good <laughs> positive energy <laughs> yeah it's a nice nice way of putting it yeah Cool. Well, that's um, yeah. I've learned a bit there about the Irish Irish system, and that's that's pretty cool. Um, so, a few a few quick fire questions now. Um, what's your favourite bit of kit? Oh, this is a weird one, but uh, the neck band. As in, I had terrible problems getting a lot of neck rash around my um, from my my wetsuit, and I did everything about okay. it with um, and stuff. But there's this new neck band that goes around your neck. It looks like something out of a weird dominatrix thingy, but it goes around <laughs> and it never hurt my neck ever since. And beforehand, well, the classic, you get in for the first open water swim, you tear up the neck, and then that just, when that's a fresh wound, it's in the pool, it's wet. It's like, yeah. it's just, it's brilliant. Now, and it doesn't feel weirdly constrictive. Now, I wear around the house as well. The girlfriend is a bit freaked out, but I think it looks like a good fashion accessory. <laughs> well, I've not heard of that before. Are you sure it's part of triathlon and not something else? <laughs> uh, maybe that was the wrong link I clicked on, but it still work. It's doing it. It's doing. It's doing its job. Triathlon. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Well, like, like I say, it's never that's never come up before, so that's a first. Well done. Um, what resources do you use, and would you recommend for anybody listening? Um, well, I said first off, for for my join a club. Um, that's how I got into a kind of moved on to the next level and kind of got coaching this there's so many people there and god knows triathletes love to talk about one another they love to talk about their races so local club sign up even if you're a newbie and this is a bit ironic because i'm a coach you don't need a coach in your first couple of years of triathlon just absorb have fun don't stress and if so yeah join a club find some tra training buddies at ref roughly the same level Later on, if you want to get competitive or you're looking for times or specific race distances, look at, um, you know, some like training peaks um, or smart endurance solutions dot com. Oh, terrible plug. But no, like um, that. you're allowed to plug on here. That's for sure. Go for it. Go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So but first and foremost, if you're new to sport, just get into the club, ask coaches, ask athletes. There's we're a wealth of info and we'll um, as I said, we're an amazing community. We want everyone wants people to do well to the point where you're not beating me. But yeah. um, and then if you're getting more competitive, then look at as I said, coaching resources. And I'm just one of many very good coaches out there. Yeah, cool. Well said. Good answer. Um, so this is a from what you've just said about resources. This is this question's sort of like I'd like a different answer. But it's the question is, uh, what hints and tips have you got for people wanting to get into triathlon? And again, um, you, could, you could refer to the previous answer, but if we can have something different. And the other, the second part to that question is, what hints and tips would you give for wannabes who want to get into age group? There you go. Okay, cool. I've been question. easy enough. Yeah. So the. First part, don't be daunted by the, the equipment. Um, a lot of people sort of go, oh, it's really expensive. Look at that bike. Wow, that's like 10,000 euro, la, la, la. Triathlon can be as expensive or as cost efficient as you want. Start off really low end. Just get get the get the cheap wet. So get the cheap bike. Try it out. Once you enjoy it, give yourself an upgrade then. That's, that's your incentive structure. Look, if I do well, if I get into beat this time i'm gonna look at the next garmin or i'm gonna look at the next bike but until i get there so don't make it too costly at the start just get the bare minimum and just get involved and um, that will be kind of first kind of hint and tip 
and as I said, a little bit refer reference to previous answer, do ask people, uh, don't be afraid of, there's no such thing as a dumb, and, a dumb question when you're a newbie. Um, ask people, what's a brick? What do, what do you mean? When, do we, when should we get into the water to go open, uh, open water sessions? What's, how do I get my shoes off quicker? Like all these things like, and then putting that in the bank, remember four years down the line, when a newbie asks you that same question, you play it forward. You go, so I remember Stephen took time and he said, look, this is how you set up your bike. This is how, think about when you're running in transitions, this is where you line up your shoes because that's where you're going to need to find them. Take your time, pay it back because someone's taken time and helped you get up the speed. And we're all, and the more people we get involved in our wonderful community, it gets bigger, it gets more competitive and we, 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 we help each other out. Um, so they're my two kind of answers uh, for yeah. the newbies. Age group wise, um, and it comes back to what we discussed earlier. One, figure out the system as in sometimes they're a little bit opaque depending on um, the actual national federation. And figure out, uh, like, and they do change from time to time. So just because I had to qualify in a national championship race, it's now the series, figure that out. Talk mm -hmm. to someone who has gone before and how they qualified because they'll know the hints and tips. And it's, they'll have no problem telling you as long as they're not in your age group. So mm. <laughs> also be clever who you ask. Um, look at how, and the next thing would be, look where the championships are the next year. Make sure it works for you. There's no point if, if you qualify and then suddenly you go, oh my God, it's in South Africa. I can't afford to go there. Mm. Just be aware of what the costs might be and the, the logistics as well. But also... Be aware that there's lots of different opportunities. There's the duathlon championships, the sprint championships, there's the Olympics, there's the long distance stuff. As I said, uh, so mm. look at it, plan it out, make sure you're aware of what you're trying to achieve and um, talk to people and get advice on it. Yeah, great answers. Yeah, I like that about looking at not just the triathlon, but the whole, the whole multi-sport arena. And yeah, that's uh, great advice. So going back to yourself, um, what are your short and your long-term goals? Yep. Um, well, long-term, and this is long-term again, and I'm still having shook uh, the M dot allure. Kona will be kind of the big, big goal I want to tick off. So I think I'm giving myself another couple of years to get there. Or I'm going to wait till I outlive everybody and go for like the 90 to 95 <laughs> age group. That, was, that was one of the... The, the, that was one of the best things I saw when we were in Vancouver. I went to the medal ceremony. And by the way, another tip, if you do get there and you enjoy it and you do qualify, make sure you go to the medal ceremony. It's an amazing experience mm. because there was this English guy and he was the only guy in the 75 to 80 age group character um, a category. And he got up and he, the place was, it was in a, an ice rink they'd converted and it was, everyone just went bananas. And they gave him, <laughs> he was such a character. He goes, look, a long time ago, I realized I couldn't out swim, I couldn't out bike, I couldn't out run them. I've now outlived them. And everyone just said, <laughs> fantastic. Like, yeah. respect yeah. to the guy. Yeah, um, so true. I wrote it, but again, it, it also shows that, like, there's another angle when we're talking about this different angle, there's different sports for all of us. There's different age groups, as in, like, as you progress or the, 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 you can get better as you got older. Like, that's a misnomer that we'll all get if you're. We'll all get slower. Yes, we will. But if you're getting less slower relative to your age of competition, you're getting more competitive. Yeah. Um, as I said and I alluded to earlier, the short-term girls, I'm going to add in um, getting back to the Olympic distance and qualifying for the Worlds again. And when things open up and there's a bit more certainty, because of what I found with even my long-distance stuff, I've got so much miles on the legs and all the rest. If I mix up my training intensity to get more Olympic-type speed in, it's not as hard to mm. get to build in that bit of intensity, get myself into those different zones and get my FT, my FTP is quite high now. So listen, let's just tap into it. Let's just blow it out for whatever the hour and see, um, see where we finish up coming out of the bike, pull the legs together. And let's, let's have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Well, I think that's covered it all. Um, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, no, I just 
Thanks very much for the opportunity and the chat, Richard. It was great to talk to you and all the rest. Great. Right. Well, we'll we'll leave it there then. Um, again, thank you ever so much for uh, reaching out and coming on and uh, taking the time out to tell us your story. Really enjoyed it. Take care. You too, pal. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, another great story there. Um, really enjoyed that with Stephen. Uh, very knowledgeable, been in the sport a long time. And um, he's made it his um, work now. He's that's his that's his job. So fantastic. Um, good luck with everything in the future. Um, thank you once again for coming on. And um, yeah, if you want to check Stephen out, you can find him on his website at smartenduringsolutions dot com, and also he's uh, got his Instagram page, um, which you can follow him on Instagram. So um, yeah, thank you for that, and uh, also thanks. For to Roz uh, for coming on and sharing her story uh, and we're going to look forward like I said to following Roz in the future um, and hopefully she can become the next Gen GB um, and that's about it for this episode and if you'd like to get in touch you can email us at agegroupmultisportpodcast at gmail.com you can follow us on Instagram at amp underscore 1967 and on facebook at amp gb uh, we have our own web page where all our um, past episodes are on there and it's um, age group multisport podcast dot buzzsprout dot com we're on twitter at age group multisport podcast and we have our own youtube channel at amp gb so if you'd like to get in touch um, on any of those um, medias please do so leave us some messages leave us some feedback uh, give us a thumbs up it all helps to um, extend our audience so thank you ever so much again for listening and don't forget stay safe keep training and love the process